Anyone in chat can get a girlfriend if they just listen to this guy? As you go to the Whole Foods, I want you to grab maybe a bag of mangoes. Then go to the register. Let them tell you the price. Say you three mangoes. They go, it's $6.42. I want you to say to them, I'll give you three fifty, dollars And barter with them on the price of mangoes. You realize they could sell it to you for three fifty if they want. Do grocery stores change the price of their fruit? Is it carved into a stone? No, that shit changes all the time. What's going to happen when you do this? Talk about pattern interrupt. Yeah, it's, it's $6.42. I'll give you three fifty. dollars Do you think you're going to get rejected? Totally. It's great, especially if there's people behind you. Public rejection, even better. Because what is your brain gonna learn from this experience? I'm not gonna die. Like literally, that is what I used to tell myself when I would feel rejection coming up or like this fear. Am I gonna die right now? You will be amazed at how much it calms you down. Are you good at- I mean, I hate to admit that like, uh, I mean, what he's saying is like a silly way to get over it, but I have actually said similar things. Like you have to get over your fear of rejection. And your fear of rejection, it, like, so your social anxiety is normal, understandable, and it's like a muscle that you need to f develop. Uh, don't know about the mango example, but you definitely, instead of like pestering and annoying like a minimum wage worker, you should just put yourself in situations where you're forced to be social with people. Um, that way, it will be, uh, that way, you will get a lot better at talking to people. It's straight up, like, it's true. You, um, it, it's a muscle. Really wild. What is this? Wait till Twitter finds out about this, bro. Despair. Okay, how dare you, dude? That's f***ed up. Don't say Marant worked on the Manhattan Project. Come on. Alcohol helps with that. That's not good. It's not a good in crutch. In sports called flopping. Now, I'm sure you've heard of it, but basically it's when someone... So there's this thing in sports called flopping. Now, this I'm is sure uh, Climate Town's new video about U.S. oil and gas companies trying to profit from the war in Ukraine. Like these guys a lot, love their last video, uh, hate this outfit, but you know. You've heard of it, but basically it's when someone pretends they've been fouled to get the referee to give them an unfair advantage. Foul going on Brooks, who to the game. And it's annoying, and it's pretty tacky, and honestly it's ruining the entire game. Well, somewhere along the line, American oil and gas companies figured out that flopping is actually a really effective technique to get the government to give you preferential treatment. Simply complain that you're being disadvantaged and that you need deregulation or subsidies and eventually you get what you want. Now it's a pretty trashy thing to do under ordinary circumstances, but when Russia launched a full-scale invasion of the sovereign nation of Ukraine, American oil and gas companies decided this was the perfect time to do a huge flop in an attempt to make some money off of the victims of- Everybody stop saying le flop, please. LeBron James famously has never flopped, okay? The man is a goddamn tank. He's an incredibly physical player. He is, he, he's under attack all the time, okay? And every single time that he has been hurt, it's been legitimate. He has never flopped a day in his life. You fucking stop this nonsense in the chat. Of a and also LeBron James, not a vaccine denier, not a COVID denier. War. Within 12 hours of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the American Petroleum Institute, a group representing 600 oil and gas, Every time we say like La Flop, La Mickey Mouse Rings or anything, immediately my mind goes to La Bisexual. It is such, it actually the funniest, like quote unquote diss. I can't stop thinking about it. It's like immediately La Bisexual. Like the, the most boomer mind could only come up with that. Okay. But China is the close second, but La Bisexual is the funniest one. <coughs> like it's just like, it's just straight up a boomer. Like, yeah, brother, he's gay. He's bisexual. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Le bisexual. <laughs> Ask companies, you know, your Exxon Mobiles, your Chevrons, your frackers, your drillers, those kind of guys. Within 12 hours of the invasion, they put out a statement saying U.S. environmental regulations were preventing them from saving Europe and that the best thing you could do is unleash American energy. Really stick it to Putin. Bro, they didn't even wait. Like, immediately, every Republican... Every Republican came out of the gates swinging, dude. They were like, oh, thank God. Thank God this is happening. Oh, fuck yeah. Like, the amount of tweets that I saw from congresspersons, even like Lauren Boebert, who doesn't even know how to read or write, I'm pretty sure. I see you reading and ignoring Hassan. Please tell me, give me your opinion on people comparing Ukraine to Palestine and Russia to Israel. I see you reading. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that right now, dude. It's, it's so gas stupid. dependent economy by letting our boys suck up all that rock juice and send it over to Europe. Because American companies are shackled and all they want to do is be free to help Ukraine fight Russia by selling gas to everyone in Europe, anyone who will buy it. 
Hi, I'm Raleigh Williams, a guy with a climate science and policy degree and a whole lot of student debt. And I'm here to talk about the American oil and gas companies that are literally trying to profit from the war. Welcome to Climate Town. Okay, so the American Petroleum Institute put out this strongly worded statement condemning Russia for the attack and casually noting that they'll probably have to sell a whole bunch of oil and gas for the good of the world. Now, it is a little hard to reconcile this statement with their other statement that America not sanction Russia too hard in order to limit potential harm to the competitiveness of US companies because they do a lot of business in Russia and they love Russia, but they also hate Russia and they want Biden to step off my balls, man, so we can fight Russia by drilling American oil. And they have four specific demands. First and first most, they want Biden to release more permits for energy development. It's funny because he looks like the most Albertan man here, okay, with the denim on denim crime that he is committing. Like, I know that he's not, or maybe he is, I don't know, but, he, and he's awesome, but he looks so Albertan. By drilling American oil. And they have four specific demands. First and first most, they want Biden to release more permits for energy development. How can we help save Ukraine when we don't have drilling permits? Second, Biden has to give them more offshore drilling leases too, because that's where the really good stuff is. Third, we've got to accelerate infrastructure like pipelines and liquid natural gas terminals so we can get that gas to Europe and end this war. And fourth, just kind of reduce all the regulations in general, because how are we supposed to work with all these dang regulations all the time? Okay, first of all, great job on the list, guys. If I was gonna do some editing, I might condense one and two. Kind of seemed tonally pretty similar. <laughs> and four was very vague and unfocused. D minus, see me after class. I will also- The reason why their, their list of demands seems ridiculous is because what demands can you make when you basically have a government that is a client state for your- uh, your pr uh, corporate profits and your profit margins anyway. What more can the, uh, the, the oil and gas industry demand of the American government? The what, like force uh, the prisoners to work as slaves at gunpoint at their oil refineries or some shit? Oh my God, I hope that's not real. I know that we do that already, but I really hope that that specific thing is not real. Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta Google this, dude. Holy shit. Oh no. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ, of course it's real. Why the f would it not be real? Oh my God. Oh my literal God. Of course it's real, dude. Oh. God damn, that shit is loud. They're drilling down there. Also note that this particular list is the exact same policy prescription the American Petroleum Institute has asked for dozens of times before. Deregulation, give us more drilling leases and let us build pipelines. And it's not just the American Petroleum Institute, it's also people on the payroll of oil and gas companies. Like, uh, oh I don't know, elected officials. Here is Senator Dan Sullivan from Alaska- <laughs> Every member of Congress. Spouting the exact same get your foot off of the neck of American energy producers line. I mean, obviously he doesn't say that, he's not a hack, he's a US Senator. Do we have footage of what he actually said? Get your boot off the neck of American energy producers. Oh, damn. No, okay, I guess he is a hack. Well, you'd have to be when you and 26 other senators take a combined 10 and a quarter million dollars from oil and gas groups and employees and then turn around and beg the US Energy Secretary to please listen to the American Petroleum Institute and deregulate our poor boys in the oil and gas game. Okay, but maybe they actually- Uh, the real victims of society, what the f what is this guy saying right now? Obviously, the real victims of society are the poor oil and gas industry giants, the, the corporate titans. Actually weren't flops, they were real fouls. 
Yeah, maybe Biden fouled the oil and gas industry when he put a pause on fracking on federal land. Oh, Biden's pause only applies to new leases, so existing operations are completely unaffected. Oh, and also they already stockpiled millions of acres of leases and oil and gas companies can now continue to drill at their current pace for another 10 years before even getting close to running out of federal leases. Oh, and fracking on federal lands represents just 9% of US oil and gas production. Oh, and they've also got tens of millions of acres of unused private leases, they're just sitting on, so none of this is even relevant. Oh, so this whole unleash American energy is really just about using another moment of crisis to stockpile more leases for a bunch of private oil and gas companies? Hmm. Huh. Well, that's kind of, um, you know, I want to say despicable, but the Despicable Me franchise and Daffy Duck saying despicable. despicable have really taken the wind out of the sails of the word despicable. despicable. So I will just play you the song of my people. <laughs> Okay, fine, maybe they flopped a little bit with the federal leasing thing, but surely the Biden administration should let them turn the Keystone XL pipeline back on. I mean, Fox News mentioned the Keystone XL pipeline 141 times in the week leading up to the Ukrainian invasion. Keystone XL pipeline. Keystone pipeline. Keystone XL pipeline. XL pipeline. Killed the Keystone XL pipeline. Keystone pipeline. From his ban on drilling on federal land to ending the Keystone pipeline. They should really let that good old American oil flow freely, right? I mean, there is just one minor problem with that. Uh, the Keystone XL pipeline is not built in his first week in office. The official approval. It's crazy, man. You know, just he should immediately build it, though. This will immediately open up the stresses. It's everybody knows you could build it like of the presidential permit for the Keystone XL pipeline. And they got 8% of it finished. This is not a pipeline that really exists. This is like it's a pipe when dream. there's not even a player near you. Also, the Keystone XL pipeline was supposed to bring foreign oil into America. That's foreign Canadian tar sands oil that was supposed to be in that pipe. That's like pretending to be fouled by your own teammate. And it's Tristan Thompson who hits LeBron James, not Damari Carroll. Okay, this video is bullshit. Actually, we're done watching it. I just, that was a fluke. Like, that was a minor fluke. Also, LeBron literally got, uh, that was a tactical nuke that opened up on his face. Uh, you can't tell from that angle, but I mean, look, look at that. That is a devastating hit. Absolute devastating hit. And then he tripped on top of that. You know what I mean? So that's the only reason why this is the only documented instance where it looks like a flop, but it actually isn't a flop. And the normal human being would have immediately been decapitated. But because LeBron James has one of the strongest necks in the game, not saying like he not not going back to the le bisexual. I'm just saying if he wanted to, he could suck the meanest dicks. OK, if he wanted to, he would be the goat at that as well. He would be the throat goat, like le, le goat throat, le goat, like goat, let throat goat. Okay, uh, just like everything else, because he is the best, uh, but he was absolutely fouled here. And it's Tristan Thompson who hits LeBron James, not Damari Carroll. Okay, now, yes, it is true that America would have refined some of that tar sands oil and gotten that oil into circulation. That, that's a great point. <laughs> Someone say he hit a chakra point. <laughs> yeah, that's famous. That's a famous chakra point, actually. Such a great point that it's currently happening because there's already the Keystone pipeline, a bunch of little pipelines, and rail. We're literally already doing, the, the oil is coming out of Canada. It's coming into America. We don't need the, the, what, why are we talking about the XL pipeline that doesn't exist? Keystone pipeline. Pipeline, pipeline. I'm sorry. Um, when it comes to new liquid natural gas terminals that would maybe ship some LNG over to Europe to help hamper the Russian invasion of Ukraine, that isn't a thing. You cannot build new LNG terminals in a day or a week or even a month. It takes years. So what the American Petroleum Institute actually wants is to build infrastructure now so they can sell oil and gas to whoever in a couple of years. They're using the crisis now as a pretext to push their agenda in the future. You know, profiting from the war. But wait, cause that war profiteering gets even profiter. My favorite pipeline argument is that it's a jobs provider and a jobs creator, especially because like after it's built, a pipeline demands like 
three people to operate it. Okay? We're talking about three jobs. Just three. Okay? I cannot believe the three jobs that we are creating for this pipeline. It's like, wow. What an incredible concept. Obviously, building the pipeline is where you are, you know, doing the job creation. Except you could build anything else. It does not have to be yet another pipeline. Oh my god. Anyway, that is a, a personal incredible annoyance that I have with this with this concept. Uh, you know, build solar panels. There you go. If you build that instead. Renewable Wouldn't energy. surprise you to hear that American oil and gas companies are actually not being economically devastated by regulations and that they are in fact doing very well? Huh? Like making record profits well? Like Chevron just posted an eight year high making $8.5 billion in one quarter. They are issuing dividends. They are paying huge executive bonuses. Yeah, this person is also correct. The real long-term jobs actually come from the regular breaks in oil releases along the pipeline's length, which of course is uh, something that uh, they never get to in time. And then oopsie, oh my God, the, the, the water supply in this area has been tainted. Oh, well, it's fine. It's indigenous land anyway, 90% of the time. And who gives a shit? They're all very poor because we did genocide on them a long ass time ago and then offered them minimal amounts of land that they actually owned in return and then now are, you know, actively destroying. Oops, who cares? You know, oops, only native. Who, who cares? Many such cases. They are absolutely not being crushed under the boot of environmental regulations. And it should kind of go without saying, but oil and gas companies like high oil prices. They sell oil. And if they get to sell the oil for extra money, they get to keep the extra money. Which brings us to the magnum opus flop. The flop to end all flops. Flopzilla, if you will. The API is just swearing that this green agenda is repressing American oil and gas producers and that they're all just chomping at the bit to get going again. So it would sure be crazy if we had a ton of footage of the largest petroleum producers in America saying the exact opposite, right? Roll the clip. Should there actually be armed conflict? Should that result in a disruption of energy flows? Would Pioneer in that scenario potentially increase production to help make up any potential shortfall? No, uh, Pioneer will stay with our plan. We announced a CapEx plan, as I said, regardless of whether it's $150 oil, $200 oil, or $100 oil, we're not going to. Yeah, why would they? We have no control over them. They are private corporations. This is why the extraction industries should be across the board nationalized regardless, okay? Regardless. It's our land. It's our oil. Get the out of here, okay? To change our growth plans. So the president... Drilling occurring. The president phoned you up, Scott, and said, you know what, we need some more oil. What are you going to say to him? I'll tell him we have a pact with our... It's all about the shareholders. Our shareholders own this company. Uh, they want a return of cash. Uh, we know what's happened when we increase U.S. shale too much over the last 10 years. Uh, so we've had a collapse. Hopefully it's good enough for the president if he calls me. Yeah. Oil and gas companies kind of have two options right now. They can drill and pump and flood the market with oil that is then worth less, generating weak returns and leaving themselves spread thin, over leveraged, and in debt. This is why I was saying for the past like week now, that the only reason why we have a manufactured energy crisis is because these companies don't want to take a haircut, okay? That's it. That's literally the only reason. Now, of course, this would be managed a little bit better if, because, like, this is being traded at the, traded at the international marketplace. It's not like, you know, our companies are only exclusively offering energy to us. No, it doesn't. It's a almost identical to what happened during COVID when 3M manufacturers decided, you know, other companies or, or other countries rather had uh, demanded uh, the PPPs before anyone else did the, the proper, the protective gear that you needed. Okay. Or the, the, the masks and they sold it. They sold it to other countries. They had already sold it elsewhere. That's why it was like impossible to find an N95 mask. It's an American company, but it was impossible to find it, right? 3M slander, I love it. I'm just saying, dude, it's just, that's just business, baby. That's just 
business, dog. That's how it works. He's raging against drilling while drilling is going on at his place. Fighting competition. Yes, dude. I'm actually, I've, I struck oil under my house. I'm building an oil refinery at my house. Dead from all the costly infrastructure they built to make more wells. Or they can listen to their Wall Street investors who want less oil. Yeah, the price is up because of traders trading futures. You, can, you can't just stop or increase well production. It doesn't work like a faucet. The f*** do you mean it doesn't work like a faucet? You, you don't want to disrupt the delicate nature and way that we actually make the most amount of money in the financialized global marketplace. That's what you are describing right now. That is what you're describing here is an admission. I can't tell if you're agreeing with me or not, actually. Because he said... You know, it's not like a, it's because it, it does literally work like a faucet. It's just that, you know, it, it works like a faucet, except because of uh, the, the finance component, it doesn't, but it does. It still does. They just act like it doesn't. Oil at higher prices, which means more cash flow going back to said investors. Biden actually. Lamau, you don't know why you're mad? No, I, I thought that that per I don't know if he was, I don't, I think he was just being sarcastic. That's why I don't know why I'm mad. Actually asked them to pump more oil, but they're private companies that don't listen to the president. They listen to their shareholders. It's all about the shareholders. Our shareholders own this company. Uh, they want a return of cash. Now, obviously, these guys are still drilling for oil. Drilling is good for business to a point. But cash flow without having to increase drilling because of high oil prices is kind of the perfect scenario for them. The American Petroleum Institute is flopping in this case because yeah, the global oil market is a cartel, and they could increase production if they really wanted to. We already mentioned that as well. OPEC Plus could absolutely increase production, except, oh, wait, no, they can't, because Russia is a part of it. And Russia, obviously, is the reason why we would demand Saudi Arabia and UAE to increase oil production to, to normalize oil prices once again, even though oil prices could be normalized, ultimately, if the corporations that were taking the fucking crude shale oil from these uh, gigantic uh, countries uh, would take a haircut along the way but they won't do that and that's precisely why it's not just OPEC's fault it's everybody involved in the process <sighs> because they see an opportunity to attack regulations that might possibly affect them in the future and they're trying to double down on their advantage but even though oil and gas companies are actually doing really well right now oil prices are super high for normal people so if oil prices spike every time anything major happens I guess it's not that reliable of an energy source. The irony of ironies here is that building more pipeline infrastructure and committing to oil and gas directly helps Russia. Every time you build a pipeline or deregulate fracking leases or sign a long-term fossil fuel contract, you are locking the world into using fossil fuels for longer. So if we take API's advice, we're effectively saving Russia's position as a fossil fuel producer to re-enter the market as usual. Actually, by maintaining a global addiction to fossil fuels, we are handing Russia an advantage because they have way more proven reserves than America does. Russia gets about 30% of their entire GDP just from fossil fuels, and they don't have a huge GDP to begin with. Russia is 34 times larger than Spain and has triple the population, but they have roughly the same GDP. Russia's economy is not that strong. What they do have is a shit ton of oil and gas. And the fact that they provide 35% of Europe's gas means that all of Europe was afraid to sanction Russia for fear of getting cut off from that gas. Sure, a handful of American companies could export more fuel to Europe for a few months and pocket that extra money, but forcing America to commit to decades of fossil fuel dependence kind of seems like exactly the wrong way to promote energy independence. Not only for the US, but for our European allies as well. But you know what does hurt Russian oil and gas? Renewable energy energy efficiency standards, battery storage. You know what would actually make America energy independent? If we got our energy from the sun and from wind and from nuclear and hydro and geothermal. If we stopped investing billions in infrastructure that still require- I realistically believe the only way to move towards that is by nationalizing, but uh, you know, it's the appropriate first step measure because any other circumstance any other circumstance, you don't even have any degree of accountability in private corporations. Like, at the very least, like, at the very least with nationalization, you have some degree of accountability on paper. Okay? requires us to import 9 million barrels of oil per day. And just to be clear, 
This is going to be hard. It's not going to happen overnight. Just also jail, jail for every single executive working at anyone working over like a management level at an oil company, whether they're lobbyists for the oil company, AKA uh, what's his name? Batista or whatever. The YouTuber that literally looks like, like a guy who would literally do law for the devil. That guy, Batista, everyone, every corporate lawyer, every, every executive, what's his name? Bastiat, that one. Um, all of everyone. Yeah, Matt Gates. He does look like Matt Gates. Exactly. Like, what's the fucking... It's like Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino, Devil's Advocate. Isn't that what it is? That's what I think of when I see photos of him. You are clueless. All right. Yeah, I am. Jail all of them. Damn, the Twitch drama has been hitting hard. I mean, that's not even Twitch drama. I do unironically believe that, you know, <clears throat> these people should go to jail for their crimes against the entirety of the planet. <sighs> In a just world, they would. Jailing people is a lib take? Okay, dude, shut the f up. I know what you're gonna say, and I'm not gonna say what you wanna say, you f dickhead. Just like kicking in- No, I believe in rehabilitation over incarceration. When I say jail, I mean, you know, rehabilitate them. Any addiction, it's gonna be painful. So I just wanna give a little shout out to Germany. They're one of Russia's biggest gas importers, but they're using the Russian invasion to try to expedite their green energy transition by about 15 years. Or at least that's what they're saying, so, you know. Fingers crossed. Now, if you want to be part of the energy transition, you wildly can be by checking out and joining some of the renewable energy groups that I've linked in the bio. Also, consider just looking at some of the books about the energy system that are linked in the bio, and we've got some Ukraine relief effort links in there in case they're relevant at the time you're watching this. Ultimately, it comes down to this. Oil and gas companies are flopping hard at every opportunity. And the answer is not to give them penalty kicks or free throws or whatever relevant sports thing you're thinking of. The answer is to kick them out so we can go back to trying to enjoy the game. And also, there's climate change. We didn't even talk about climate change. All that was economics. We have, there's a whole other huge reason to, I'm sorry, okay, um, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you liked or even tolerated what you just saw, we've got a whole video coming out about gas prices that gets really into that nitty gritty. It turns out a lot of people sort of think that whoever gets elected president has a sort of dial where they get to set gas prices. And it's just a little bit different than that. So if something like that sounds interesting to you, consider hitting the subscribe button. Dude, this guy, I love this guy. Okay, great stuff, always. Really good. Uh, or the like button. Um, or writing yourself a little note in the calendar to say, hey, come on, come on back now real soon, you hear? If you want to learn more about how to support the green energy transition, come on down to the Climate Town Discord where you can ask questions, post memes, get involved, that kind of thing. You know the drill. Okay, thanks again for watching. I'm gonna go back to wondering what the f*** is gonna happen next. Bye. I respect. have not tried marijuana. Uh, I have Respect uh, to Climate Town once again for making an absolute fucking so there's banger this thing in of a video, criminally uh, underrated. Once again, um, of course, probably people look at it and then see his outfit and think to themselves, "Well, this is not an actor that I would like to learn from," because he's wearing a motherfucking Canadian tuxedo. So you we're gonna take a your look chat, here. Your friends? I've heard some. I don't consider chat individually as, as individual human beings, Just but one my organism. community, my community is one big organism. I do absolutely, I have a negative and bad parasocial relationship with my chat. <laughs> Chat's about to like form a thing about like, I'm not your friend, like come to life matrix style. No, literally. I mean, it's not healthy. I recognize that it's not healthy. I get like upset. You know this. I get upset and sad when I can't stream. Yeah, it's weird. Like he talks to you guys more than he talks to his own family, which is. Okay, really stop. Sad. Okay. We don't have to. Own me like that, okay? Backs over his feelings, bro. See, chat saying we are not your friend. Now you did this. I want everyone in chat to individually tell you that you're not their friend. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>